Okay, we're here at Atos headquarters in Warsaw, offices in Warsaw here with Matija Fersin of Atos based in Bydgoszcz. Uh, nice to see you again today. I uh, okay. wanted to kind of catch up a little bit with what Atos is doing uh, on the IT outsourcing side in Poland, new markets, new locations, employee issues, new clients. But just give, give us a bit of background of what Atos is doing in Poland and what you see the prospects are for the next one or two years. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. So, Atos in Poland is, um, we started 18 years ago. We're going to celebrate the 18th birthdays in June. We are close to 4,000 engineers between Bedgosz, Warsaw, Wrocław, uh, Opole, and, uh, and Krakow. Mm -hmm. um, well, Atos, as a global data center, we are involved in most of the uh, most of the activity of Atos worldwide. So we are running the IT and the, and the security for the Olympic Games. So we were oh. in Pyeongchang. I did see that. Yes. Yeah. And okay. so Atos is actually had the big pressure yeah. there, right? Yeah. yeah <laughs> it went very well. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, so actually, we have a couple of guys from Belgium you know, flying to Pyeongchang huh. for every actually major event. So huh. it's quite a, quite a huh. big thing. Um, what we do plan for this year is about um, yeah, 10 to 15 percent growth, so that's you know stable growth, and um, we we are going to extend a lot of what we call engineering, and uh, you know moving out from uh, uh, I would say commodities IT to much more engineering because there is a tendency actually to shift most of the commodity work to India or yes. to you know less uh, expensive yes. data center. Uh -huh. And, and we are focusing on EU restricted contract. So when we have also, from Poland you can also run some uh, NATO uh, security defense contract. Yes. You, know, you can have access to all this uh, EU restricted contract also. So this, this is where we are focusing. And in that aspect, we are going to invest uh, massively. And actually we did invest already in, uh, now in H1, um, a big part uh, in, the, in the training and upskilling. We have all these uh, new digital technologies coming in, such as you know, Office 365. You have a lot of things happening around software-defined software, software -defined network. So this is where we want to be, and this is where we have the new contract coming in. Um, so it's not new technology, but okay. it's a new way of working as well. So it's uh, um, when you look at automation, so we have a major partnership with uh, IPsoft, with Arago, uh, also with ClickFox. So it goes from uh, automation at the level one, so you know, using avatar and for the service desk. Mm -hmm. But we also have uh, a lot of automation in the data center kicking in. So nowadays, every contract will actually get like 20 to 30 percent of automation embedded into the contract. So this is what we have also to, to deliver. Yes. And um, yeah, so we are looking also at expanding a bit on the um, and doing more uh, activities in German, in French. Uh, this is also a differentiator when you look at you know competition from India, Philippines, and any other place. Yeah. Uh, Can so they not deliver that at all? For the most part, I mean, no, the Indians can't get the German and the French, do they? Yeah, and I think if they can, also there's a challenge that you know you need not only the language, but we have an ITO business, so it's much more easy for us also to ramp up this kind of activity, and then actually to have the people uh, following that path using French or German language and doing you know IT jobs. So that's also one of the on the aspect and it's, uh, it's a good differentiator. This is also one of the reasons reason why we're in Poland. Okay. So we don't see, uh, um, I mean, of course, we have a challenging, challenging recruitment market. Yeah. And um, I think nowadays also we need to have new solutions. So we are going to bring also a B2B contract in the company, yeah. as opposite as everybody on the labor contract. This is also demand, right? Um, mm -hmm. But we have also a lot of B2B that are related to restricted access, you know, so okay. we, go, we are going to implement the B2B possibility, but we need to make sure that we also have, we have a compliance aspect on it. Right? Okay. And um, yeah, this is also one aspect when we are going to invest much more than we invest in the last year. We are looking very much at compliance. We are looking at the aspect of the GDPR coming in, actually in less than uh, yeah, a month now. now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are investing as well in the security aspect, so we have a uh, big data and uh, security division in okay. Belgium with a uh, prescriptive stock, which is also something unique on the market. What's the name of it again? Uh, BDS, so it's okay. uh, they're running, you know, security operations center, okay. and uh, you have a prescriptive stock, which is basically doing uh, uh, prescriptive security uh, analysis, you know, for the client. They do also forensics, so a lot of mm. uh, fancy stuff, you know, mm. and this mm. is also. Uh, 
this is very much growing in Atos. So we did a very good numbers with uh, uh, with UCSR last year. Yeah. Huh. yeah so that's for okay. that's for this year. Okay. And the the locations you said earlier that you've uh, expanded beyond Bitgos and Warsaw with uh, operations in uh, Opola. You mentioned yeah. a few there. Where else have you? Set new operations, Krakow, you mentioned? Krakow, yeah. So, yeah, yeah Krakow, we have, um, we also, Atos Bar also um, engaged GSM, so which okay. is a service now consulting and developing company. Okay. So they are based in Krakow. Okay. Uh, so they are part of Atos as well, you know, as, okay. a, as a group. So expanded there through acquisition, basically. Yes, yeah. also, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Opola, you said you got a few people there. Why, yeah. why so spread out? What is the value of spreading out beyond your existing markets of videos, for example? Well, I think a part of it is is uh, due to historical reason, okay. right? so acquisition, uh, for yes. example. Um, but also, I well, we do not believe that everybody is keen to work 100% uh, remotely. Yeah. So you will notice that usually after 18 to 14 months, people will have a tendency to leave because you know it's very boring to stay you know, at your home yes. every day. Yeah, so people need to connect. Yeah. Um, so, so that's one of the reasons. Then we also have very good relationship with uh, special looking zone, or you know, uh, official in the city, so in Bedgar, in Opole. Yeah. So it's also a way to show our involvement in Poland, and it's a commitment. Yes. So it's not only about you know setting a business, taking 50 guys, and in yeah. three years from now you're out. So it's about also long term uh, strategy. Yes. Uh, yeah. So it's and and in terms of other markets beyond Poland, would you guys look at? I mean, Hungary, Lithuania, Czech Republic, is that something you would imagine doing at some point? Yeah, so we have um, close to 2,000 people in Romania. Oh, do in you? Okay. Yeah, oh. also due to historical reason, and yes. um, it's, uh, it's working very well. Okay. So we share more or less the same client, more or less the same activity. Yeah. So it's like, you know, uh, we have a kind of um, uh, brother and sister GDC between yes. Poland and Romania. Yes. And uh, we also opened very recently in Bulgaria, in Sofia. Huh. Uh, Very strong IT skills in Bulgaria, I understand, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, also for historical reason, we, we bought Unify a couple of years ago, so they have a center in Sofia, so we are using that, you know, just to yeah. try to also to uh, tap into some specific network uh, resources that they could have in Sofia. Okay. And, um, and I th yeah, we are not going to invest uh, in another country for now, I mean, uh, in Central Europe, right? Okay. And except that, we have also very large presence in India, um, in the Philippines, in Manila, okay. uh, in Mexico. Okay. Uh, so I think we cover worldwide, we yes. cover 24-7, and every language. Uh, we also in Tenerife. Uh, we huh. have some, so... Um, nice place to be yeah. based in this summer and winter time, right? Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you said, Matthew, about the, we were talking about automation and RPA. Tell us a bit about uh, that, that's sort of the hottest topic everywhere you go these days for SSC BPO conferences. It's all about automation and uh, cutting costs through uh, process automation. Tell us a bit about what impact that could have on Atos um, and what in reality for your operations RPA means. Mm. So I think it means that anyway we will have to deliver and um, so we need to make it work. Now the question is, um, when you look at every every product on the market, yeah. um, is is actually uh, very specific to one kind of automation, right? And then on the top of that, you have multiple orchestrators. But uh, you need also to look at uh, the process aspect. We need also to look at how much do you, do we want to automatize? Because a lot of the process actually we do uh, run. You can. I think you can still eliminate a bit of it mm -hmm. before you go to automatize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for every center, every IT center in Central Europe, it's keen to make it work because this is one of the way to also to be back in the cost competition. We are never going to be competitive against India, yeah. uh, but we are definitely competitive when it comes to quality, when it comes to engineering, when mm -hmm. it comes to level three. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when you look at um, uh, network architecture, technical architect, you can ramp up a lot of the, actually this profile in Poland. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do we automatize enough to be back in the game in terms of cost mm -hmm. and um, you know, and not to have only a discussion okay. about, okay, the level one is at this level in India and this level in Poland. So for, I think it's strategic for every company in Poland yeah. to yeah. invest into that. And just a last question, going forward to two, three, four years, um, what type of, what, what does Atos look like in Poland or globally in two or three years? Last question, just last comments. 
What would you imagine? Uh, I think we will be uh, much more oriented with uh, EU client, restricted oh. client. Okay. We will run, uh, we will run operations. Why is that? Why? Because it's a market for us. It's okay. a differentiator compared okay. to compared mm -hmm. to India. Mm -hmm. uh, also, thing we are running to get much more activity linked to uh, cloud. When you look at for every company today, cloud is revenue is mostly about you know storage. Uh, well, actually, the pure operation of cloud is still very limited. But yeah. if you consider that Amazon and uh, Microsoft is open a data center in, uh, in data floor in France you know, yes. last year, okay. this is going to create a new demand, and you will have restricted operation from Europe to operate this okay. specific activity, okay. you know, for AWS okay. or for Azure. Okay. And I think this is where we are going, and we are. I think we are already already, already half of it. So. Okay. okay, good. Good, thanks a lot. Talk to you Thank soon. You Appreciate your time today. Thanks. Thank you.